All right, what do we have today? Artisan Cutlery. This is the Orion. I don't know if you know this company, based in Chino Hills, California. Been around for five years, I think. Um, but they just make some really beautiful knives that I've gravitated towards. I also, I think, showed in another video another one I have. But um, they make them in China out of a particular plant. I guess they have a relationship with out there or something. But they are they definitely don't feel like a Chinese knife in hand. They do cool finishings like this one right here. Love this um, packaging. Just think it's super cool. And then in there, it's like one of those babushka dolls. How many how many of these do you have before you get to the knife? Um, and they just have really amazing lines and design benefits and touches and stuff I think are really cool. Lifetime, limited lifetime knife warranty, which is awesome. Um, and you get the little cloth and stuff when you get this one. So let's take this out of the package and get our hands on it and see what we think because I haven't had a chance to really tinker with this yet. And what better time and place to do that than here. So we'll down a little closer here. Sorry, I'm sure that was super annoying beyond there. So this particular one, the Ariane, I think they may make it in like other um, deployment models, but you know, has the slot for deployment and then it's a liner, um, I'm sorry, a frame lock design. And the first thing I notice once I get my hands on it is, I don't know if you can even see this in the video, see if I can get the right angle on it. Maybe you can hear it. But the titanium scales have like a, <clears throat> it's kind of like the tactile turn, but maybe even a little finer, definitely finer, because you can barely see it. It has little lines going this way. Let me see if I can get that in a spot where you can tell or see it. There you go. I think you can now see that. Um, so really cool feeling, just in hand, very slim feeling. Oh, kind of a cool, um, you know, kind of pen style pocket clip there too which I'll have to give a try to I'm always I'm honestly like not the biggest fan of frame locks due to lock stick and stuff but um you know there case in point I think I may have just pressured it there but um generally this one seems pretty pretty darn good and the action on it is just like super smooth I'm not the best at thumb flicking a slot if I have a slotted deployment like this I'm gonna pretty much go to a spidey flick every time and get it out that way um, for whatever reason just my hand shape or whatever my flexibility I don't have like the most flexibility in my fingers my son for instance thanks to his mom can bend his fingers like straight backwards and you know based on size of my hand which is again like four inches here three and a half at the fingers and just the lack of flexibility in my fingers I'm gonna pretty much I'm really, I struggle to deploy with the thumb here. So I'm gonna pretty much spiky flick or finger flick this type of knife. So yeah, boy, I gotta say, like I've got a few different knives like this. I would compare this in my collection to something like the uh, Tactile Turn. Let's see if I can pull that out really quickly. I'd compare it to like the Tactile Turn. So let's get this guy out. Very similar in size. Maybe we'll do a weight comparison on those two. Um, I would compare it to, I have a small Savenza. It's not unboxed yet, so we'll, we'll do that one on another call and get that one out there, but that'd be similar. You know, you could, you could certainly compare it to, uh, you know, something like the Demco with the titanium scales, which I don't have out right now, but I've been carrying the Grivery Gray. This is a, you know, after all I've been talking about with Demcos and all the knives, this is all of a sudden becoming my carry this week. And I could see it being my carry for a long time for one main reason. What do I use my knife for? Most opening boxes. And this is the easiest deployment. I can do it lefty, righty. Oops, sorry. I'm kind of blocked by the camera there. Hard and having trouble seeing. And I've said it a couple of times, but it's almost like a gravity knife where if you're at like a 45 degree angle, you don't even have to touch anything or put any momentum onto it. It'll just open up. Once it gets like 
broken in. And I'm also really curious to see, like, I think Goss 10A may be like one of the more underrated knife steels out there. And I'm really curious to see how this one holds up. I have been using it a lot on the trampoline project, uh, which you may have seen some videos on opening boxes, cutting anything from cardboard to plastics, opening a lot of like plastic. I bought some um, sanding tools and had to open some plastic, you know, some of that hard plastic, you know, tools come in those impossible to open by hand plastic containers. And so far, I don't feel a single chip in the knife. So although I thought I was going to be carrying more of the titanium model, losing three quarters of an ounce, this thing's been doing really well in the pocket. So anyways, I know we're, we're focused here on the artisan, but I'd say just stylistically and size-wise, those are probably not too far from each other. What else do we have that compares here? Um, you know, you could almost throw like the mini bug out in there, but it's in such a different class that I wouldn't. Oh, uh, you know, it'd be a great comparison here, actually. The Civivi Elementum. I keep mentioning it. I put oil in there to oil the pivot, and the micarta totally has like oil stain on it now, which is very depressing, but at the same time, it's a knife. But I could like kind of put this in the same class in terms of like, you know, size and whatnot. But I think I picked up this artisan cutlery from White Mountain Knives. Maybe it was Blade HQ. I think I might've gotten that one from Blade HQ. I'll have to double check. But yeah, these would be some that I would kind of compare like, God, I love this. This is just one of my favorite knives. I just love this thing. And also really good for the finger flick. Liner lock versus frame lock, which I prefer in general. I I just, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. But I prefer a liner lock slightly to a frame lock for the lock stick factor, if nothing else. Um, like, I don't know if it's happening right now, but... You can see I just struggled there a few times. Do I dare do this on the channel and show myself going to the hospital? I don't know. Um, so let's talk about the blade a little bit on this. So uh, one of the cool things, and I have totally glazed over it, but um, hate hate the China thing there. That's not ideal. But S35 Yen, um, I don't think it's like, I think I may have seen this even in another video, but Putting the serial number on there is totally unnecessary. It's not even the model name, but the serial number. I love the logo. And that's actually not their logo. That's, um, I can't remember who the collaboration is with this, with on this knife. Um, so I should have, should have reminded myself of that before the, uh, uh, before the video. Um, don't love their logo for the reason that many people have mentioned. It looks a little bit like a swastika, um, but it's fine. It's actually st like objectively good, but subjectively questionable. And then this isn't my favorite blade shape. You've heard me talk about it a few times. I don't love a super pointy blade. Let me look at this off camera. Is this a, this is a spear point, I think. I think it's a true spear point. I don't think that's a drop point. I think it's almost equal on both sides. Although you can see like the um, grind starts here. Yeah. I think that's a spear point. You know, who cares? Um, really beautiful knife though. Let me see if I can get like a good view of it here for you. Just the whole thing. Get the right lighting on it. I'll just change the lighting a little bit. So yeah, if you're looking for this, I don't know if they still have them, but they were like marked down pretty good on a couple different websites. Um, and yeah, I just, it was like S35 Yen. I don't want to say the pricing, you can go look at them out there, but for what I got it for, I felt really good about the price I paid and like what the knife is. Like this feels like on the level of this for less than half the price. I think MSRP might be a little more than half the price of that, but you know, this versus this, like this is, it's definitely a level up. Um, and I, you know, prefer a thumb stud personally every time. Um, but it's not far off. You can actually see a lot of similarities even in how they did the, uh, you know, obviously not similar in, in the way that the uh, lock works, but 
like even the size of the pocket clip and the uh, um, style is like kind of just a little unique, right? They're not these typical, you know, utilitarian pocket clips that you typically see on a knife like this. So really a cool knife. Again, this is the uh, Artisan Cutlery. I think it's pronounced like Arian or Arian. Comes with this really nice tin. Um, let me see if in here it says who the collaboration is with that this was made by. Oh, it also comes with a cool card. Maybe that will tell us. So got the model number, frame lock, got the rock wall hardness. It's not exact, but ceramic bearing, titanium handles, S35DN steel. So this one just says artisan, but I know that that, uh, that this one is a collaboration with that company. So maybe you can put in the comments the name of that company because I'm forgetting it, but it's actually a really cool logo there. Um, very slicey. I don't measure my knives on this channel, but I can tell you that that is a very slicey edge. I'm gonna go pull out some newspapers. You've seen I prefer newspaper as a test because I think it's very hard for the knife to perform on versus you know, printer paper or something. This has even been cut up a few times, so sorry for that, but so it's not the best I've seen. It is made in China, but it feels like a very slicey edge if you were to do that. Oh, yeah. Definitely if you give it like a little draw on the cut, then it slice off. It's not pushing, push cutting super well there though. Not doing a great push cut style. So let me find some cleaner. We'll even just put this, let's put, let's put these knives to the test. How about that? Let's put this whole group of knives to the test. Um, two of them have been used, two of them have not. So this is unused. It's definitely a slicey style, but I bet you could sharpen it a little better than the way it comes from the factory. Okay, so let's put that out. Let's go. This has been used. I love, and this is amazing to me. This blade steel must be like, and that was just as easy, if not easier. And this blade steel must be like 25% thicker. Take a look at that maybe 50% thicker. I like the jimping on here, by the way. That does have a nice feel to it. There's not really like a choke up point on here. You have the sharpening, but not a, you know, sharpening trail, but not like a real forward trail that you can get into like you can on here. Um, sorry, let me come around the side here. this guy go. Sorry if I was doing some of those cuts off. Oh my god, magna cut. This is an unused knife also. Tactile turn just does a really nice job. I guess it wasn't that big of a difference. That one could probably also. That one. It's pretty good. Oh yeah, we're leaving these out here. And then I've put some pretty serious uh, whittling on this so this is probably the most use of the knives this uh Civivi elementum so i'm probably gonna have yeah this is a no-go ah, look at that d2 steel man pretty good edge retention on it it's definitely not as <laughs> it's definitely struggling more than the other knives but non-scientific test there for you of these various cool knives that are all kind of in a similar size class. So last thing I'll do is I'll just throw some, throw some weight and testing on these. Um, and we'll go from there. All right, let's check the weight. Elementum, I think it's 2.7 uh, ounces. How does the artisan cutlery compare? 2.97, just under three, which is kind of my benchmark of something I'm like really pretty comfortable carrying. 
this guy weighs a little above it, three and a half, but it's been pretty good. I think it's because it's such a big flat surface. It doesn't really bother me in the pocket very much. So that's just gonna go back in the pocket here. And I think this one was around three also. 2.5, that's pretty nice. This thing always, I've mentioned before, feels a little small like that, but um, God, what a cool knife this one is. So anyways, um, I'd say a worthwhile knife, especially for the price, especially if you're looking for like a little slicer like that, just something that is very thin. Let me try it out in the pocket real quickly. Yeah, I mean, just pretty much disappears in the pocket. It's very flat feeling. Um, I'd say the things I like the least about it would probably be the feel in hand is not terrible, but it's also not like particularly good. I feel somewhat confident with it, but it feels just kind of like some knives feel more like uh, confident and some knives feel like an accident waiting to happen. This one feels a little bit like an accident waiting to happen. I get that feeling a little bit with the... Uh, uh, with this guy as well. Sorry about the miss flick there again behind the camera. But there's something, because this one's wider. Um, so let me show that here. Let me take a look at the blades first. I'd say the Artisan's actually a little wider, but more progressive. You can see where this one starts the uh, tactile turn. Um, I don't think I've even given the name of this knife tactile turn rock wall. Thumbstead, where it sort of starts. One of the cool things about it, by the way, is how tight this is in here to get it out of the cutting path. God, they're just really similar knives, aren't they? Very similar. This is a little longer, but I think it's a little wider. Let's see if we can do this without losing the finger. They're actually really similar. For some reason in hand, this one feels narrower this way and wider this way, which I think it is, you know, wider that way. You can see it stacks up a little taller on the handle there, but it feels more narrow. Maybe just due to the dimensions. Feels good though. It's a good feeling knife. It's a beautiful knife. This one feels wider in the hand, maybe because it's um, not as wide this way, it makes it feel wider that way. It's more like round feeling almost in your hand. I get a tiny hot spot on this one from the uh, pocket clip, but not it's not terrible by any means. And the jimping is really nice there. The jimping's good on both knives. Yeah, they're both good, you know. For, they're both small, good feeling knives, but these are the two that I compare the most when I think about this style. You know, I have one more that's kind of like this, but I'm going to do it on another video. Um, is it a Kaiser also? Oh, it's a Kaiser, not, a, um, not an artisan cutlery. The Kaiser Quell reminds me a lot of this, which I'll do on a, another video, but might as well pull it out while we're at it. Because I do, I kind of left this out and I feel like this is a, a very similar knife in a lot of ways. You can see I kind of gravitate towards this Sort of similar style. That feels a lot heavier. Feels like a bigger knife. I think it's a 3.2 inch blade, whereas the other ones are more three inch blades. Um, so let's compare it to this one. And also a frame lock. If you haven't seen the Kaiser Quell, probably do a separate video on this one as well. Um, but very comparable. Uh, sheep's foot blade. Really nice, like cutting edge on that. Um, but a bit of a longer, bigger knife there. And let's just weigh it for fun. Just bring that in here. Enough for you to see it. 3.44 ounces on the Kaiser Quell. Reminds me more of like a what's that remind me of? It's kind of like a Chris Reeves or something, but obviously vastly different. I don't think it's just the frame lock, I think. And I get some, one of the things I find when you're doing a, um, uh, you know, with this deployment model, sometimes it's tempting to pinch down here. You have to really be careful uh, not to get 
the lock stick. But this thing is kind of loosening up. I haven't really used any of these knives that are out here significantly. But this would be kind of a, this would be another really good comparable for that. So, boy, knives, so cool. Um, but these three kind of feel in the same category. This is also an S35VN steel. There we go. And this is a, a Kevin Kellerman design. And although I don't think it's necessary to throw in the uh, the model number again, I do think that this one's more subtle, and I kind of like the markings on this more than the because of that than the um, artisan cutlery. Just putting the china and everything on there, I just think is unnecessary. But I got this one for around the same price as well. I was kind of going through an S35VN stage and trying to find titanium knives, S35VN or Magna Cut. And these two came out of that little purchasing period here in my phase three of my knife collecting. So some cool knives here. Um, but yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get rid of these two and come up with a final thought here on the, uh, the artisan cutlery. Just a really nice knife, like, especially if you're trying to you know, get into a little bit of a different deployment method. Sorry, I'm gonna come around here. I got both hands now. Should be able to deploy better. Um, you know, trying to be behind the camera. I just, I'm reaching around in a funny angle and I can't see what I'm doing and um, tend to miss more often. But this one, generally, I get pretty consistent deployment on and I got a feeling if I used it a lot, it would just get that much looser and better. It, it does feel really nice. Like the detent is strong. Um, it it's a nice feeling knife. That is just a good value knife for, for what you can get these for, especially if they're on sale. Highly recommend taking a look at it, especially if you're looking for this kind of, uh, you know, I think spear point style blade. Should have, I gotta do my research before I jump on here, but I get excited about a knife and I just sort of jump on and tell you what's on my mind and you know, that's not the same as every show. There's definitely people that are much more educated in the knife space than I am. But hopefully I represent a little bit of a, an enthusiast that, you know, also has some level of understanding of some of the companies behind them, the metals and the knives. Um, and just give you a kind of unique perspective of more of a consumer. Everything that you see on this show, on this channel, I bought. Uh, there's not something that's been given to me by a vendor or one of these websites. I've bought everything that you see in this collection. And I think that's probably a little unique. Um, maybe eventually it'll get noticed and that'll change. But for now, you're going to get a really objective, consumer-based perspective on these knives. Um, and this artisan cutlery, I'd say I'm going to start giving them ratings. I haven't done that before. And uh, I'm tempted to go out of five because it makes it more cut and dry, but I'm gonna go out of 10, which is a little bit of a cheat mode. And I'd give this one probably like for what it is, a seven, eight. For what it is, I'd give it an eight out of 10. I'd say like against all knives I have, I'd give it like a seven. There's just some knives I like more, but for what it is, I think, you know, if you're looking for this type of knife, I think it's right in the 8 out of 10 in terms of like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the criteria I'm grading that on. Um, value, so like how much do you actually spend on it? Materials, fit and finish. You can see that's the one thing I don't like about it is the size of the screws when you're going to be servicing this. They're, I think they're all 6 millimeter. Maybe it's an 8 and then 2 6. But they look really small to me right now. I should have checked before, but I've never... I haven't been using this much, so I haven't like had to service it or anything like that. Um, uh, you know, uh, so I, I guess this is as subjective as anything, but um, uh, cosmetics or you know um, design, we'll call it design. And I'll write this down and make sure this is consistent in the future. But I think of design um, as one element, um, fit and finish. Uh, cost and value and um, feel in the hand would be a big one. Feel in the pocket is obviously a big one. Pocket priorities. I should probably put these in order. Feel in the pocket would be a big one. 
But a knife like this, I don't know I'm gonna carry super much. It's more of a gentleman's knife kind of carry. So I'm not gonna look at a knife like this and put, put it to that. That's why I was saying for what it is, I give it like an eight out of 10, like objectively for everything, I might give it like a seven out of 10, but I'm not gonna look at this as my EDC. You could absolutely make this your EDC. It feels like it has that kind of reliability to it. Simplicity, the way it would cut would work well. The size for carry is the weight. Everything makes sense on this for an EDC, right? Sub three ounce. However, this wasn't, isn't something that I'll necessarily carry a lot. It's more that I love variety of knives and understanding them, looking at them, feeling them, playing with them, you know, using them um, here and there, and maybe an occasional carry for certain knives. But I'm more likely to carry this, given what it is, USA made, you know, this tactile turn, made in Texas, USA company, Chinese made, right? Or manufactured in China. Honestly, well, this is kind of unique. I'd say there are other American knives that I would put, you know, right up against this in terms of its, this is, they, they do a different manufacturing technique at Tactile Turn. So it's almost like an uncomparable, the way that they make their pens has like two to three X the small tolerance versus a typical knife manufacturer. So when you're handling this knife, it feels like you're not going to even be able to pull it out of there. The D10 is so tight. And then it just like flies out. Like that's faster than like a swish plate. It's just insane how fast this knife deploys because of the tolerances and just how it feels. Like this is definitely on another level from this, but it does cost more than twice as much or MSRP is twice as much as this. For what this is, really good, you know, especially at the sale price, if you can find that on sale. We'll say for around a hundred bucks instead of, I think it's MSRP is like 200 or maybe more, then I'm, you know, a pretty big fan. I think you see this like for 179, the website's marked down to around a hundred bucks. I don't wanna say exact numbers, but in that range, I feel really good about the value and what this knife is and would highly recommend it. So in, in terms of my five elements that I mentioned, and maybe those elements I'll change and I'll use a different grading model, but I'll try and start using those five elements of first and foremost, pocket carry, feel, um, fit and finish, um, the uh, um, design, uh, the feel in the hand, and the... Um, I forgot what the fifth one was, but I'll, I'll watch the video and write them down. I put this one in that kind of rating. It's very nice, very recommendable. And um, yeah, check it out. Uh, Artisan Cutlery did a great job on this. Thanks for uh, your contribution to our community. And um, I think that's a wrap. Um, please feel free to like, comment, correct the things I got wrong. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and um yeah, look forward to seeing you on the next one. All right, take care.